another three, four years, you're going to be watching television and saying, hey, you know that big star? I saw him when he was just playing the addicts in Chinese food restaurants. <laughs> now look at him. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Ryan Donahue. Hello, everyone. Rick asked me to take a break from the gym for a little while, come down, tell a couple stories to you fine folks. I figured, you know, I got a little time now. It's Saturday, I might as well, you know, give the biceps a break. I've been going hard, I don't want to tear too much muscle, that's how you end up hurt, you know? Working real hard. Working on that Grinch body. That winter Grinch body. Little arms, little legs, little tum tum. I'll tell you, you never forget the day you realize you got a Grinch body you're working with. This past summer, I'm outside. I'm on my porch, you know, and the leaves are in the wind. I don't got a shirt on, you know, I don't care. <laughs> Someone said something I didn't like, so I spit. <laughs> my spit, like, clipped my gut, and I spit out of the, the sidewalk. And some girls across the street saw that happen, so I just, like, slid the spit into my belly button. <laughs> I've had a Grinch body ever since. It's funny. Things happen. I like this area. I like Cambridge. It's all right. I, I live in Somerville. I go out there sometimes. I went to a bar in Somerville a little while ago, and uh, I was walking up the stairs to the bar. Bartender's outside smoking a cigarette, you know. And he sees me approaching, and he just looks down at me. He's like, hey, I remember you. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> He's like, yeah, you, you remember what you was doing in there two weeks ago. Get your shit and get going. And I was like, oh, okay. But the strange thing about this particular incident is that uh, I had never even been to that particular bar before. <laughs> and that's my problem. See, everywhere I go, I look like I was an asshole there two weeks ago. <laughs> Like, I'm a good guy on the inside and everything, but this whole situation with which I carry forth is the uh, white trash spirit animal of every bar I've ever been to. Just loftily dropping Matlock DVDs in his brain. <laughs> like, every time a kid in a Van Halen t-shirt gets kicked out of a bar for being too drunk before 9 p.m., I can feel it in my hair. <laughs> these little smug bastards making it difficult to be alive. How do I say? Like when Sandra Bullock does mushrooms and then looks in the mirror, she sees my face. <laughs> um, that's what I'm I just want a job, you know? That's all I want is a nice job. Mom says, you gotta go to college. If you want a job, you gotta go to college. I'm like, okay, I guess, you know, so I'm kind of, I gotta make this quick. I gotta go back to college, but. <laughs> it's, it's difficult, man, because like, what I'm saying is, I don't need college for, to get a job, you know? Like, when I was 17, I wanted to work at a roast beef place, so I went down to a roast beef place, got an application, and on the application under interest, I wrote roast beef. <laughs> you bet your sweet ass I got that job. Life is simple if you, will, if you want it to be, man. God damn. I try to meet girls all the time, too, like walk in the park, you know, see a girl that's pretty or whatever, and I go and I get my own way. I ask stupid questions up front. I'm like, oh, hi, miss. Um, what kind of dog is that? She had a dog. It wasn't insane. She had a dog. And she's like, oh, it's uh, a Shiba Inu? <laughs> I was like, oh, what? And she's like, yeah, Shiba Inu. I was like, oh, all right, well, how do you spell that? I was thinking about getting a dog from my apartment. I want to write it down. She goes, it's spelled how it sounds. And she left my presence. Like, that word sounds like it's spelled with like triangles and squares and shit. 
do on the spot in the world. world. Like, I like women as much as the next confused man, if not more. But I gotta say, there's something about a woman in heels that's just so ready to hurt my feelings. See her walking? feelings are hurt. That's all that is, man. Every time they do it, the heels get a little bigger, too. You're a douche. That's why when you see a woman in huge heels, that's a bad bitch. You don't talk shit to her, you don't mess with her, because when she got those shoes, those heels were this big, and then she earned those inches like karate belts. That woman is a sensei of penile destruction. It's tough, man, it's tough out there. Like, I had an experience, a woman was coming towards me, she's wearing her heels, so she looks like she's stomping out kittens on her way up the hill. Coming towards me, and she dropped a little uh, debit card, so I picked it up and I gave it to her. And she just kept walking away without even looking at me or saying thank you at all. I'm like, you can't disrespect me like that. My uncle Bob lost his favorite testicle during the Vietnam War. <laughs> in a uh, in a knife fight outside of Dunkin' Donuts. And right there, uh, Person. I deserve a little respect. It's not my fault that she decided to turn her vagina into a local golf course. Oh. <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Her vagina is a golf course where rich men play and poor men trespass. <laughs> tired of people calling me Chica. <laughs> yeah. Frustrating. Spanish guys in the neighborhood all the time. Hola, Chica. Hola, Nina. Kitchen where I work. Nina, Nina, la quesadilla. Table 202. Like, <laughs> Quiero respecto. Quiero some fucking respecto in this bitch. No soy chica, no soy bonita, no soy gordita, pescosa. Yo soy tío. It's uncle. Damn it. God damn it. Frustrating. Got a family too, I have a family. Had a family reunion, uh, I don't know, a couple months ago. Those are always strange because you don't know half the people that are at them, you know. Just like, flew in from Des Moines. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I was standing by the lasagna at this past one, and this guy I've never seen before, he's like 45, he comes up to me and he's like, the President of the United States is Barack Hussein Obama. <laughs> What the hell is wrong with this country? And I was like, I'm Kurt's son. My name's Ryan. He's like, oh, Kurt's my cousin. That makes me your Uncle Bill. That's a strange way to get an uncle, number one. And number two, what a silver-tongued devil, huh? <laughs> I mean, who would have thought such a charmer would be in my family? I didn't get to meet him until I was 23. If only I got him earlier on, I could have learned the gift of gab at three years old. He could have sat me on his lap and been like, listen, kid, when you get older, people are gonna wanna talk to you. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna talk back. Now, me, my big secret is, I started off up front with a fact that everybody already knows. <laughs> that way, they know you're a regular guy. <laughs> And then what I do is I follow that with a question that nobody knows the answer to. Because it gets them thinking, see? Watch, I'll do it to your father. 
Hey, Kurt, the right fielder for the 85 New York Mets was Daryl Strawberry. What is the meaning of life? <laughs> Guys, a lot of people have been calling me a dyke lately. <laughs> So I gotta go address that in person. Thank you very much.